past year, I've read books I didn't like, books I loved, but I haven't read a single five-star book yet. A book that makes me feel something on a level that most books don't. A book that sticks with me for weeks when I'm having so much fun, I simply don't care about its flaws. This video doesn't end until I find a five-star book. I've been reading so many mediocre things for the past few months that I'm really kind of in a reading slump right now, so I really need just one of those books that just makes you feel like you can't stop reading. And this video won't end until we found that. My journey began on those last surprisingly sunny days that precede the autumn season. Despite not clicking with her other work, I picked up the newest book by Ellie Hazelwood. I guess I was hoping a romance would be the pick-me-up I needed. It was a shot in the dark and I was fully prepared to hate this book, but... Well... Hello, I'm a little bit sick, um, in case you're wondering why my voice is like this. But let's talk about the first book that I read that I didn't expect to like, and then also the pile of books that I made that I think I might really love that I want to read for this video. So I read Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood. Didn't expect to love this, but I did. Even though I'm still not a fan of Ellie Hazelwood, it's... We have, a, we have a weird back and forth going on, Ellie Hazelwood and I. Her writing style, it's not for me. I know I always say that I like my romance books quirky, and I do, but this is just a little bit erring on the side of cringy for me. Sometimes I think that they're wonderfully self-deprecating, quirky, and then at other times they just veer over into cringe, where it feels like the author is just trying a little bit too hard to make things funny. The thing about this book is that I really, really loved the setup of this book. Not only is it an interesting take on the fake dating trope, because our main character is like a professional fake dater, and instead of the book being about the fake dating plotline, it's about a man who sees through her fake dating thing and he sees through all of her fake personas and is like the only one who like sees her for who she truly is and is like you need to be yourself and I like mm, I eat that up. The main character has like a huge people pleasing complex and this book really is about her trying to get over that and learning to be herself and this love interest is like this man who just sees her for who she is and it's it just um I just related a little bit too much to that, you know? So I couldn't help but really, really, really love it. Our main character, Elsie, and this dude, Jack, also have fantastic chemistry. I love seeing that. You know how I always talk about how I want my romances to be between two people where you understand why it's these two people falling in love with each other and not just hot dude, so he's the love interest? This definitely has that, like you can see how she is this like people pleaser, chameleon girl and he is a guy that sometimes is maybe like a little too rude and he's like really good at standing up for himself and you can just see why they have this beautiful chemistry because they just, and they just understand each other. I love that. <laughs> but in true Ellie Hazelwood fashion, sometimes the love interest just does something and I'm like, wait, that's supposed to be romantic? Because to me, that feels like a straight trip to prison. I don't wanna spoil what happens, but there are certain things that happen that the, the love interest does. And I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> who, you, you need to be handcuffed right now, sir. Like, I feel like this is illegal what you're doing. It's weird. If I found out about this, I would call the police, but our main character thinks it's cute. So yeah, a tentative four stars to this book. I genuinely really enjoyed it, but then sometimes Ellie Hazelwood just had to come in and do her little typical Ellie Hazelwood things that I really, really don't like. But I do understand the hype now. I understand the Ellie Hazelwood hype. This one was kind of a surprise. Didn't expect to love this. Now I have a few books that I'm pretty sure I will love because they sound like exactly my thing. Um, first we have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, reading this for my Patreon book club. There's a witch, there's a demon-possessed chicken, a fairy godmother, there's a quest storyline. It just sounds like my kind of cozy fantasy folklore -y 
spiel that I love. Um, and then I have this book called Assistant to the Villain. Just the title alone makes me think that I would really, really like this. So I think I'll first start on this one and then I'll get back to you once I finish it. You know what I also love aside from reading? Playing video games. That's why this video is sponsored by G2A. G2A is the largest online marketplace for digital products and games. You can find all sorts of discounts for games on their website, so you can make sure you always get the best price, especially during the autumn time when there's vibes like this. I love going on my Switch to play a little game. Take a look at their website, it will be linked in the description. And thanks to G2A for sponsoring this video. Imagine the deep disappointment I felt when I, a lover of villains, morally grey characters and satire, found out that Assistant to the Villain was nothing like I expected it to be. The humour was in the style of Ellie Hazelwood except even more millennial cringe. The romance was of the broken formula, described man as hot equals chemistry. And what I thought would be satire turned out to just be a shallow rehash of common tropes. I even decided to make a full video on why I didn't like it, what I would have done better and what makes a good villain romance, so I'll link it in the description if you're interested in that. Uh, this just really wasn't for me, uh, but I do go into who I would still recommend this book to uh, in that video. Hello! I'm just getting ready to see some friends, um, but I have to take an hour commute. So of course I'm gonna take with me the next book that I'm reading, Nettle and a Bone by T. Kingfisher. I'm really excited about this ever since I first heard of it, because it's giving fairy tale-esque fantasy, which is exactly my niche favorite fantasy. I've seen some TikToks about like what's your favorite niche genre of books. Mine is fairy tale-esque fantasies about naive girls learning to grow into their power and it seems like this book is going to be one of those as well. I'm, I've only just started but it's very much fairy tale vibes. You ju you're just following this girl in this castle and her sisters have to make babies for the prince. It's kind of awful in true fairy tale style. Sometimes it just gets like really dark really fast. And she's just living with the nuns, doing nunnery things. But she's very naive and you can see her kind of slowly learning that the world is a lot darker than she thinks it is. And I think that's going to kickstart the rest of the story and I'm very excited about it. It's honestly been a while since I felt this kind of enthusiasm about a fantasy book. So that bodes very, very well. Hello, I'm listening to the audiobook for Nettle and Bone as I'm making pita bread for dinner. Oop. Oh, it's so soft. Oh, the dough has risen. So Nettle and Bone is pretty much a cozy fantasy, except it's also a little bit scary. I know those things sound like they shouldn't go together, but they do. It's cozy as in the stakes are not too high, you're mostly just watching these very quirky interesting characters go on a quest together to kill a prince but you know and also the quirky things about these characters is that they you know like are graveyard witches or have demons in them things like that so it's like spooky vibes come on do come out so the vibes are kind of spooky but then they're also cozy and i like the combination of that but as a result, I'm also having the same problems that I usually have with Cozy's fantasies. The dough is a little sticky. And that is that when I first start with them, I'm like really into it, you know? Especially with this one, it's like so well written. The characters are so original and have their own clear quirks. 
And then around page 200, I'm like, okay, I've seen it. I'm not actually that interested in the plot anymore. Maybe it's just because it's a plot driven story and that's not really my thing. But I've kind of come at that point where I just keep thinking about what book I'm gonna read next. And I'm waiting for the moment for this book to be over so I can read my next book, which is really not a good sign. So I'm just gonna finish making my dinner and then finish this audiobook and then see what I think of it when I finished it because again it's not it's not bad it's it's good it's just I think it's not gonna be a five star the question is is it gonna be three or four finished the book and I've made my pitas. Mm. Mm -hmm. I really like the ending of the book. <laughs> there were some shock moments. I think this is definitely sitting at a four star. This was such a cute wonderful novel. Like I just love the vibes. I think you would love this book if you also like slightly cozy fantasy that touches on some dark topics and has a kind of graveyardy goblin core vibe that's how i would describe it if you like quirky little characters but you don't go very deeply into the characters or the character dynamics that's something i really noticed there's really fun characters but not a lot of focus on how the characters interact with each other and that's my favorite part of characters. Other than that, it is more plot driven. It's very much a quest of just these characters going on their little trips to different places to get something they need. So if that sounds like something you would like, I think you would really like this book. I'm now going to eat my pita and then I will choose my next book to read. Ooh, let me turn these on. I don't know when this video is going up, but currently it is almost October and I'm fully in the spooky vibes i'm going to be spending the weekend visiting my parents and i tend to get a lot more reading done when i'm there i don't know why that is there's just something about <laughs> i just have a really hard time just sitting in a room by myself and reading i know that sounds really weird but when i'm somewhere else and there are other people for example my parents i can super easily spend like the entire afternoon reading, but I don't tend to do that when I'm alone. Please tell me I'm not the only one who does that. <laughs> so let's pick some books to take with me. Oh, let me grab a candle and put it here for the vibes. Vibes, aggressively creating vibes. That is what I love. I have some five star contenders here, some books I could take with me. I recently bought myself a copy of Wuthering Heights that I'm gonna be honest, I really want to read right now, but I'm going to save this because I want to make a video with it. What I also have here is this wonderful book, Slewfoot by Brom. This is very, very witchy. I mean, it's literally called A Tale of Bewitchery about a young woman who I think she's accused of being a witch or maybe she is a witch and she strikes a deal with a demon love that it's got i know i say this every single time that i talk about this book but it's got great illustrations look that's oh oh i really want to read this oh sometimes you just hold a book and you just know you want to read it yep this is gonna be my weekend vibe and then i'm also taking with me just in case um a book that i haven't really talked about yet on this channel but since the summer I've been reading the short story collection by Ted Chang, Stories of Your Life and Others, including the short story that has inspired my favorite movie of all time, which is Arrival. And I love that that short story is in here. And so far, oh, I've read four out of the eight short stories so far. And I've loved, absolutely, absolutely adored and loved almost every single one of them. 
Um, it's just been good. It's been really, really good. Wow, great description. He writes science fiction that genuinely just blows your mind. Like the way that this man writes short stories, if you ever thought you didn't like short stories and then you haven't read the right short stories. I also thought I didn't like short stories because I didn't like the ones I'd read. But then I started reading a few that I absolutely adored. And I realized that if you don't like the short story, it's just not a good short story. And these are all, so far, have all been absolutely fantastic short stories. He takes this extremely interesting concept of science or biology or history and turns them into a sci-fi fantasy story in a way that is just, it's beyond me how this man does it. Almost every single story that I've read so far has stuck with me. Like the visions have been burned into my retina in like a good way. <laughs> so I want to continue his other short story, so I'll just take it with me, you know? So then I have two books to take with me and have fun with. Love that! You cannot see my face. Interesting um, light situation we've got going on here. Okay, this book. Oh my god. I'm living my Halloween dreams right now. I don't know if any of you have seen that horror movie, The Witch, the A24 movie with Enya Taylor-Joy about this Puritan village and there's like some witchery, some devilry involved. That's the vibes that we get in this book. Oh my gosh. The first chapters of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, where she's in this little village in France and it's about her making the deal with the devil that like the rest of the book is about. Those first few chapters, imagine that as an entire book. You get this. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving this like Puritan American colonial village problems, the neighborhoodly problems that are existing in this very, very God-fearing town. The wild demons of nature of the forest. Oh my God, you guys know that I love any kind of story that is about some kind of bond, some kind of relationship between two characters where you're like, this is potentially like bad, but also I'm very interested in reading about it. That's exactly what's happening between our main girl, Abitha, and this devil slash beast that she meets in the forest. Wow. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it's actually been a very, very long time since I've had that feeling of, oh my gosh, I can't stop reading. I'm looking forward to the next moment that I can pick up this book. I haven't had that in a very long time, even for the books that I've really enjoyed, all the books I really enjoyed in this video. I just rarely ever get that feeling anymore of, oh my gosh, I can't stop reading. And I don't know why that is. 
if there's something wrong with me. Um, but this book, Slew Foot, is making me feel that feeling again. I love it. Is this video gonna be over soon? <laughs> I just can't wait to pick it up and continue reading. I'm gonna continue reading right now. I'm almost halfway into it. I wanna do nothing but read this book. It's been so long since I've experienced this, wow. Also, this book is horror, but so far it's not like super scary. It's a little bit gory, but that's about it. I guess the subject matter, like the demons and the blood and stuff is kind of horror-y, but it's nothing that's making me sick or wanna throw up or anything. <laughs> also, funny thing, this <laughs> book takes place in Sutton in Connecticut, and apparently like another close by town is Hartford, Connecticut, and I'm pretty sure that's where Rory Gilmer's Chilton High School is in Gilmer Girls. And I just find that very, very funny. <laughs> the idea that this pretty much takes place in the same place as um, Gilmer Girls. Because yes, it's small town vibes, but it's a uh, completely different, not so cozy small town vibes. <laughs> I'm gonna continue reading. Hello, the power went out, so I have to put on some candles to get a little bit more lighting to do the update for slew food and give you my final rating. Anyway, I wanted to say that the past few weeks, my theaters have been showing reruns of The Hunger Games and Catching Fire. And it's been like the first time in 10 years, I think, that I've seen those movies on the big screen. And it really just transported me back to when I was a teenager, completely just in awe of those movies. And I kind of really miss just being so completely and unapologetically obsessed with the story. Even if, you know, the boys think it's stupid. The boys look down on you for your girly obsession. Like, that just doesn't matter at all. Because you just love something so much. I don't like how it's never cool to love something. It's cooler to be the skeptic. Respectable and trustworthy people don't love too much. If you love a lot, Surely that's a sign of some lack of character, a lack of critical thinking skills. Don't be too happy about too many things or you'll be accused of being weak-minded. As if it's not incredibly easy to dislike. As if complaining requires less strength than putting your admiration into words. And I always keep coming back to this quote by Ursula K. Le Guin that I would love to share. The trouble is that we have a bad habit of considering happiness as something rather stupid. We can no longer make a celebration of joy. And these candles do actually give off quite a lot of light. I think I'll take this off because it's too dark. I want to get my blanket. I'm not trying to say, by the way, that we should never dislike anything and we should all just love everything. That's not my point. There should always be room for media criticism. I love media criticism. I do it. It's like the whole thing of my channel. It's a very good thing when people have room to dislike things. My point is that I don't like when people kind of put disliking things a lot on a pedestal and make experiencing joy about things something that is subpar. Keeping that in mind, how do I rate this book? Because was this really a very good book? No. The plot is very, very singular, very simple. It's just this woman who's being put on trial for being a witch. And that's the entire plot of the book. And then this demon character is kind of grappling with the fact that he's a demon, which actually is kind of funny. The rest of the plot is basically just one big power trip of this witch being like, goodbye to all the very annoying Puritans. A lot of the characters are like a little bit one dimensional, again, except for the demon that's struggling with the fact that he's a demon. <laughs> but that being said, ahem, I can't help but feel like this book was written very specifically and only for me. 
I love stories about women going up against the men in life that are oppressing them. I love stories about obsessive cult-like groups. In this case, it's just like very cult-like religion. I love stories where nature plays a very big role and humans connection to nature. The imagery of this book, I'm not kidding when I say Princess Mononoke, if it was more of a horror movie ethereal and ancient with very eerie undertones. This book almost turned me into a monster romance girly and I will not elaborate further on that. I think only the people who have read this book hopefully might be able to understand what I'm saying. If not then I've just publicly embarrassed myself. For the thousandth time, I love that there's creepy and dark art in this book. And I think if any of those things also sound like your thing, you're gonna love this book. There was a little bit of torture, by the way, by, at the end that did kind of like <sighs> me. So if you're a little squeamish about those things, this might not be your thing, but it is a horror in the end. And I do enjoy a little bit of horror. I want to encase myself into the dark villagey atmosphere this book creates. So does that mean it's a five star? I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'm too harsh on giving away five stars. I want to say this is a five star, but to be completely honest with you, I can see myself changing that rating in like two weeks, six weeks. Who knows? It, the rating is very arbitrary anyway. The most important thing that I want from this video is to just share the joy that I had while reading this book. And this video kind of forced me to only focus on books that I really thought I would love, that I really thought would be my thing. And I'm completely out of my reading slump. I'm so excited for the next books I'm gonna read because I feel like they might be five stars as well. Might just continue make another video like that. Like, I still have to continue the short stories of Ted Chang that are so innovative and using sci-fi and speculative fiction to talk about so many interesting scientific subjects. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a five star as well when I read it. I'm currently actually reading Wuthering Heights and I can't wait to read this as the back of the book says, a novel about obsession, violence and death. Sounds like a five star book in the making. I just really love reading and I really love stories and I really love books. I feel like I only read four books in this video, which maybe isn't a lot. I just yap a lot. <laughs> Oops. Let me know the last book that gave you that feeling of, oh my gosh, I absolutely love this and I feel like unapologetic joy about this book. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe so we can talk about books more often. Would love to have you here. I want to give a big thanks to my patron with a special shout out to all of the elite patron members right here. I don't have access to the internet right now, so I can't say welcome to the newest member. So I'll give a welcome in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon in another video very soon. All right, goodbye.